the scariest sounds in space are 100% real. A while back, NASA posted some audio clips on their official website of real sounds captured from objects in space. Now that should be impossible, right? There's no sound in space, so NASA's clearly a phony agency that fakes everything. Okay, relax. As much as I love the tinfoil hat stuff, NASA actually has something called an electromagnetic acoustic transducer, a device that can convert electromagnetic waves and other vibrations emitted by objects and map them to audio waves that we can hear. Pretty much everything is just a wave. Light, sound, electricity, radio, ultrasonic, the only difference being the length of each wave. Some wavelengths we can detect with our eyes, like the visible light spectrum, and others with our ears, like sound, and still others that we humans can't even detect at all. This gadget takes those waves and maps them to the audio wavelength range that we can hear. As it happens, some electromagnetic waves in space even occur within our audio frequency range, and we can listen to those directly using this device. Well, from those readings, these have been rated among the scariest sounds in space that NASA has ever recorded. That just sounds like a howling breeze in the middle of winter to me. This one, this one makes sense to me. A pulsar is a rapidly rotating dead star. I could imagine one would sound like that. As weird as it is to say, that's exactly what I'd imagine the Milky Way galaxy to sound like. Bro, what? Nah, 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 bro. That's fake. That's fake. This one I'm calling cap on. There's no way. Nah, 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 nah. This one ain't real. That ain't real. A little scarier, but this one sounds more real to me. Okay. A little creepier. Sounds like there's something going on over there. The moon. Now that right there. That's a black hole. Yeah. That's definitely not a place I want to be. Oh, well, looks like that's it. Let me know if you think these sounds are real or not. NASA discovered city lights on a planet 11 trillion kilometers away, which is just around the Oort cloud, a sphere of ice and other space debris that surrounds our solar system, kind of like our backyard. And there's a planet here? For the longest time, NASA used the Hubble telescope, which orbited Earth to take the craziest pics of deep space since 1990. Then in 2021, NASA launched the OP James Webb Space Telescope, JWST, that just stepped in and said, hold my beer. Hubble has a 2.4 meter primary mirror, which is what it uses to zoom in so far and wasn't orbited orbit just 570 kilometers above Earth. JWST has a 6.5 meter mirror and orbits one and a half million kilometers above Earth, which is past the moon. So powerful that it can detect artificial light, such as that produced by a city or a nuclear explosion on other planets, which was previously not possible. Well, the closest planets to our solar system are 4.2 light years away in the Proxima Centauri star system. Then how did we spot city lights 11 trillion kilometers or 1.2 light years away in our cosmic backyard? This must mean we found the forbidden planet X, you know, the Anunnaki planet of Nibiru with its elongated orbit around the sun that visits us at once. Nope, it doesn't look like we actually found anything. Turns out an article just stated that JWST can detect artificial light from that distance and got misinterpreted. But NASA did actually confirm light emitted from another rocky exoplanet, TRAPPIST-1b, 41 light years from us. Here it is on their official website. So that's it. Alien civilization confirmed, right? These must be city lights. Well, with an average daytime temperature of about 230 degrees Celsius, it might be a little too hot for comfort. Maybe life on this planet adapted to the hot temperatures with like thick skin or underground bunkers that keep them safe. Maybe, but the more likely possibility is that this light was just the solar rays of its home star bouncing off the planet's atmosphere. NASA's final answer. Basically just this planet's version of Aurora Borealis, the Northern Lights, which JWST just happened to catch on camera. Which if it does produce Northern Lights, it may have a significant 
atmosphere, and that's always promising for life. Trappist 1B is also tidally locked, meaning one side is always facing the sun, which may be too hot for conventional life, and the temperatures would be cooler on the night side, probably freezing cold, but that would imply a perfect temperature Goldilocks zone ring around the planet for life to potentially exist. All we know for sure is that this was the first detection of any form of light emitted by an exoplanet as small and as cool as the rocky planets in our solar system. Maybe it was just stray solar radiation bouncing off the atmosphere, but maybe we just saw the first glimpse of intelligent life in our galaxy. Just like when astronomers detected a repeating radio signal coming from another exoplanet, YZ SETI B, only 12 light years from us, which was swept under the rug. A repeating radio signal coming from another planet? <laughs> that has to be an intelligent species trying to talk to us. Nope. According to NASA, this repeating signal is just the planet's magnetic field interacting with its sun's rays, which releases radio waves like clockwork due to its two-day orbit around its sun. They really doing everything they can just to not admit it. Like, come on, where are the aliens at? For the first time in history, an interstellar object has officially been spotted in our solar system. And there's a Harvard professor who absolutely insists it was an advanced alien spacecraft. Which in this day and age is nothing new. We see UAPs on the news and social media left and right. But this one called Oumuamua has all the features of potentially being the ultimate mothership. A bit of old news, it visited our solar system back in 2017, making its closest approach to our sun on September 9th of that year. But it's what it did right after that had scientists around the world baffled. It's shaped like a cigar. A very common shape among all those confirmed UAP sightings we've been seeing everywhere. Except this one was much bigger than anything we've ever seen before. Roughly translated from native Hawaiian to scout or messenger from the past, Oumuamua is estimated to be anywhere from 400 to 1000 meters in length and is on record officially claimed to be an asteroid and nothing else. Yes, clearly just a normal asteroid and nothing to see here. Despite it having no characteristics of a real asteroid, cause you know, there's this thing called gravity that tends to squeeze objects together into spherical shapes, not a cigar. On top of that, UFO sightings on Earth are very commonly cigar-shaped. We'd imagine any interstellar object in that shape to be part of the same family. This one also happens to be the first object from deep space, something we've never seen before. What are the chances that the first asteroid from interstellar space looks nothing like any local cluster asteroids we've ever seen before? Because Oumuamua came in hot, and I mean hot. What really caught astronomers off guard is when they observed Oumuamua, its trajectory did not support classical Newtonian physics, and it actually sped up by itself, which they confirmed was not as a result of the sun's gravity. Yes, it accelerated on its own. It even continued to get faster after passing our sun and flying through the rest of our solar system, something that is never supposed to happen. On top of that, it followed a path that scientists claim would have been ideal for exiting our sun's gravity, all by accident. The counterclaims to this acceleration are that it received a push from the pressure of our sun's radiation, or that it may have warmed up as it got close to the sun, released frozen gases inside, which propelled it forward. Forward. Except no trail of gas was observed and would have likely caused an erratic, irregular orbit instead of the smooth path we see it follow. Scientists even confirmed that its trajectory around the sun was not following Newton's laws, meaning that something we're not aware of was affecting its motion, such as a propulsion system. In June 2018, highly esteemed Nature Science Journal published their analysis, noting an unexplained change in speed from 57,000 miles per hour as it entered to 97,000 as it left our solar system, a 70% increase. Stuff like like this just doesn't happen on its own. And again, this was confirmed to not be as a result of the sun's gravity, as one might expect from the slingshot effect. Then in November 2018, chairman of Harvard's astronomy department, Professor Avi Loeb, wrote a paper about this peculiar acceleration. In the paper, he states that the object may be a fully operational probe sent intentionally to Earth's vicinity by an alien civilization. Maybe. Maybe not. It's currently on its way out of our solar system, too far away to see anymore. In January 2022, researchers proposed Project Lyra, where we'd launch a spacecraft to Oumuamua for closer study. But it would take 26 years to catch up to it, on top of the years they'd need to actually build the craft. So you think it's worth it? And would they even tell us the truth if it actually was an alien mothership? A 32 kilometer high tower is being planned that will be suspended from an asteroid. Yes, 32 kilometers. That's 20 miles high and it's totally real, proposed by Clouds Architecture in 2017. For reference, the current tallest building in the world is the Burj Khalifa in Dubai at 830 meters. This will be almost 40 times higher. Called Annalima Tower, it's planned to be attached to an asteroid 50,000 kilometers in space, suspended by a series of cables that will hold the building in place. The asteroid will follow a figure eight path in Earth's orbit, 
moving at 480 kilometers an hour. So the tower will actually fly through different cities every day. This mega high rise will sort of be its own self-sustained city, not even connected to the ground and divided into separate sections, each with their own purpose. Starting with entertainment, shopping, dining, and office spaces at the very bottom. We go into the gardening and agriculture section and then the residential above that. The monument, which will probably be for like nice views and sightseeing, worship for religion and reliquary, which is a place used to store sacred relics. I kind of wonder what they're going to keep there. Then at the very top is the funerary, their cemetery, which will be so high that you get an extra 42 minutes of daylight and a 10% horizon visibility. Maybe we'll finally be able to see the curvature of the earth from up there. The top of this tower will be more than three times the average cruising altitude of a commercial airliner. Partially powered through solar panels and water will be supplied filtered through clouds and rain. There are still so many unanswered questions for this project, like how will people even get off the building, which the company suggested parachutes, or how will anyone even survive in residential units higher than Mount Everest where oxygen is thin and temperatures at negative 40 all year round. At the end of the day, this is just a proposal that hasn't started construction yet, and they do say that we don't exactly have the technology to support it yet. But it does seem like they put some very serious thought into it, so I don't know, Dream Home 2050 or is this just the tower version of Snowpiercer?